in terms of what we're all about as entrepreneurs, we're problem solvers. So if we solve somebody's problem in the right way, for the right reasons at the right time, people are way more likely to want to do business with other people that they know, love, and trust, right? So it's up to us to become somebody's favorite. For you to come out on the other end of this, not only do you need some profits, but you need to know that people are out there looking at you as that guide, realizing what your mission is, realizing what you're standing for and why you're showing up. And with that mission over money mindset, that's exactly what will happen. We stand today. The Business Method with a shout The Business Method. The Business Method Podcast. The Business Method Podcast featuring Chris Reynolds. Entrepreneur's systems, methods, tools, and tactics for location independence. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm your host, Chris Reynolds, and welcome to the Business Method Podcast, a podcast featuring successful entrepreneurs and high-profile people dissecting their business models. We dissect the different methods, tools, and tactics of high-performance online entrepreneurs and high-caliber people in a series format. On our first series, we interviewed 100 entrepreneurs in 100 days that have built businesses creating $100,000 or more annually. On our second series, we interviewed 100 entrepreneurs that have built location-independent businesses that produce over a million dollars in annual revenue, and now we're interviewing 100 major influencers to get behind the minds and the science of using influence to grow business and influence income results, economies, and cultures. There's a growing number of people building these caliber of businesses like this, and we're going to figure out what it takes to make this happen. Now, let's jump in today's show. The Business Method. Hello, listeners. Welcome to the podcast today, you guys. I am very excited to introduce today's guest, Chris Ducker. I followed Chris for a long time. He has been in the entrepreneur, specifically the online remote entrepreneur world, since like before 2010. Uh, Originally started out in the Philippines, building an outsourcing agency that still runs to this day and building a multitude of companies that uh, run and employ collectively around 400 employees. On top of that, he's a personal brand expert. He runs a personal branding community. He teaches people how to build personal brands. He's the founder of youpreneur.com, youpreneur.com, and also chrisducker.com. He's a blogger, podcaster, content creator, course creator, and manages and runs the Youpreneur Academy, which is the membership site for his personal brand and for people that want to learn about personal brand and building business or businesses around those. It's really important in times like these to have a personal brand. I think because with personal brands, people are looking during times like these, people are looking for leadership. If you are their go-to leader and you have the mobility, foresight, and flexibility to shift in times like these, your messaging, you can really help out a lot of people as a personal brand leader in a space like this. Chris walks us through the steps. He's got um, three really foundations and then five steps within those foundations to talk about how to build this, build an audience, how long it took him, how to amplify your messages when he decided to start doing that, how to leverage a community, how he did that and when throughout his personal brand business growth and when to create digital courses and then multi-day conferences or high-end masterminds. He dissects all of that for us along with price points that he talks about how he sells and why he decided to sell things at those points. And on top of that, how to manage yourself as an entrepreneur in this chaotic time. But first, a word from our sponsors. NomadX.com is shaping the way remote workers live, work, and learn online at NomadX.com. Remote workers can find apartments, bedrooms, or co-living spaces to rent on a monthly basis. 50% more affordable than Airbnb. True story, you guys. Plus, that's not all. NomadX is a comprehensive educational platform providing easy-to-learn courses to start or to scale your successful location-independent online business. They have built an incredible community with more than 7,000 remote workers and online entrepreneurs, and they have over 21,000 followers on Instagram to show you how to position yourself as an authority and how to combine different social media channels to gain maximum visibility. 
During these remote working times, NomadX.com is the trusted community for location-independent entrepreneurs to live, work, and learn online. Check them out at NomadX.com. That's NomadX.com. And now, without further ado, you guys, let's jump into the show. Chris Ducker. Entrepreneurs, systems, methods, tools, and tactics. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast today. I'm really excited to introduce today's guest, Chris Ducker. I have followed Chris for quite a few years. He was originally a location independent uh, entrepreneur for quite a while, which I was as well, as you guys know. He's a serial entrepreneur, keynote speaker, and author of the bestseller Virtual Freedom, and also the author of The Rise of the Youpreneur. Originally from the UK, he spent around 15 years or so in the Philippines, I believe. And he also hosts and is the founder of the Upreneur Summit, which is in the UK, and has founded several businesses which combined an amount of over 400 full-time employees. He's also the uh, popular business blogger and podcaster at chrisducker.com, uh, the founder of youpreneuracademy.com, and the founder of youpreneur.com, an inclusive, exclusive personal brand bu- business building community. Chris, welcome to the show. How are you? I feel like I need a holiday after that. (laughs) (laughs) Clearly, I've got way too much going on all of a sudden. That that, that crept up on me, that did. (laughs) It's always like from the outside looking in, you know, you think you've got it all under control and then somebody shows you how much you got going on. You're like, wow, I've done a lot. That's what it's about. I I mean, thank you for mentioning all those different semi brands within the bigger brand of Youpreneur, though. I I, I appreciate that. Youpreneur really is kind of like, the you know, that's the business, right? And then we have all these other little things that go around and are included in that ecosystem. So I appreciate you bringing them up. Yes. And I I really like this concept, Youpreneur. So for those that don't know, Youpreneur is a personal brand building business community. And um, the idea and value, I was watching a video of yours recently, the value of being a personal brand or having a personal brand and being a youpreneur is incredibly important, I think, in today's marketplace, because you mentioned in one of your videos, there's relatively no competition if you're just being you, right? Yes, correct. Tell us, tell us more about the community and the concept and the idea where this came from. Yeah, well, I mean, we, you know, I first uttered the word Youpreneur back in 2014. Um, so it was a good, a good while ago. I was, uh, was actually in the United States um, on a, a speaking tour. I did about 12 gigs in six weeks um, to promote virtual freedom, which had just come out and, and, you know, pretty much became a bestseller overnight. And when I was over there, I got into um, a, a not necessarily a heated discussion, but I was part of a panel uh, at, at an event where I was also doing the closing keynote. And I got into a somewhat of a heated discussion with somebody in the audience who asked a question who, who basically said that, um, you know, personal brands are a waste of time and this and the other. And I didn't actually realize until I was almost, you know, prompted on it or challenged on the concept of the personal brand, how incredibly strong I felt about it. And, you know, I, we kind of went back and forth a little bit and we agreed to disagree. He said, you can't build a business around yourself. You know, it's not future proof properly, et cetera. And I said, well, you, you full of crap. You can, tons of people do it. You know, we kind of just went back and forth for a little bit on it, much to the audience's uh, delight, no doubt. And, um, we actually ended up that evening having a scotch at the bar together. I never met this guy before in my life. His name was Jesse. And um, yeah, at that point, I realized just how strong I felt about it. And uh, I, I went away and kind of was talking with my buddy, uh, Pat Flynn, uh, from over at Smart Passive Income about it. And he was like, well, you've got to, if you feel like, you know, important, you know, if you feel like it's really that important to you, you've got to coin a phrase, you've got to build it out. And that's exactly what I did. And so he launched Youpreneur.com um, and youpreneuracademy.com in 2015. And uh, the rest is history, as they say, you know. 
So, so if we can, Chris, go through maybe some of that gentleman's, Jesse's points and then your points and, and the discussion you guys had, because we've had people on the show that go back and forth with this a lot. I kind of have a personal brand around this podcast. Um, we've had a lot of people that uh, have personal brands come in, you know, even seven figure personal brands, you know, and talk on the podcast about how they did it. And then there's always people that haven't built a personal brand. They, they built a, a company, maybe they sell physical products and they have, they have talking points too. So do you mind going through that, uh, the, the points of, that both you guys brought up? Yeah. I mean, obviously I, I can't remember all of them. I think there was two major kind of sticking points from his end saying that it, it wasn't a long term, uh, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? It wasn't a, a long-term strategy to build a business around your personal brand, which I do incredibly disagree on because, you know, there are people, look at Richard Branson. I mean, he's got Virgin, but he's a personal brand and everybody knows who Richard Branson is and who Virgin is and, and vice versa as well because of the very reason of, you know, the brand, the personal brand of Sir Richard Branson is built into Virgin and the Virgin group of companies is built around him with the whole screw it, let's do it mentality and stuff like that. So I, you know, until the cows come home, as we would say here in England, I disagree with the longevity, uh, you know, issue with anybody that says it's not a long term thing. The other thing is that, you know, a lot of people think that a personal brand business is not scalable. I call BS on that as well because there are, you know, eight figure personal brand businesses out there. My very good friend, JJ Virgin, who just did the opening keynote at last year's Upana Summit is an eight figure personal brand business owner. She has you know, been all over media for many, many, many years, built up an incredible personal brand for herself around the health and fitness space. She's got her own line of supplements and protein bars and shakes. Uh, she also does online courses, speaks all over, around the world. She's running an eight-figure business. It's not reliant on her by any stretch of the imagination, but it is based around her and her methods and what she stands for. And I think, you know, at the very core of every personal brand, that's ultimately what a personal brand is. It's what people say about you when you're not around, right? When, when, when you're not at the conference or the coffee meeting or that dinner party, you know, when you're, when you're not there, how do you want someone to talk about you? That's your personal brand. And you can absolutely build a strong, highly profitable business based around a personal brand. I agree. I agree. I think their points sometimes are saying that um, <clears throat> they can't build a business themselves. They don't. They don't know how. But also that, uh, like, like for example, this comes up a lot with people that have built very successful physical product businesses, right? And they think that they need that that brand separate from themselves for the longevity to continue. Yeah. But. <clears throat> You know, you're right. J.J. Virgin, Joe Rogan, uh, Jesse Itzler, Richard Branson, Russell Bronson, and like like it or not, Donald Trump. Um, we'll leave the politics aside, but like it or not, 100%, he won his presidency on a personal oh, Without a doubt. The guy, you know, he's not a politician. Half of what comes out of his mouth is completely fictitious from his own mind. But at the end of the day, there are people that are out there in the world who who – he is their favorite, right? He is their favorite personality, their favorite outspoken entrepreneur, their favorite real estate developer, their favorite content you know, publisher, whatever you want to call it. He is their favorite. And at the core of what we do as youpreneurs, as I call ourselves now, our business of you mentality states very clearly that you've got to become somebody's favorite. So, you know, you would do so much better, not that you're doing badly, but you would be so much, you'd do so much better with this show if the people listening in said to themselves, oh man, Chris is my favorite. You, know? yeah. you do just fine. Don't get me wrong. You do fine. But if, if everybody that tunes in says, Chris is my favorite, Chris, Chris Reynolds, oh, that guy. Yeah. He's my favorite. He's my favorite podcaster. Then you're winning every single day at that point. How do you get people to say Chris Tucker is my favorite? I pay them. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a big bank Serious account. Serious wads of cash thrown down. <laughs> no, I, you know, it comes down to anything else. It's providing value, you know, showing the heck up and providing 
value over and over and over and over again, whether people ask for it or not. Show up, provide that value, create that content, speak on that stage, travel to that event, whatever it is, show up. That's how you become somebody's favorite. And obviously, you know, in terms of what we're all about as entrepreneurs, we're problem solvers, right? So if we solve somebody's problem in the right way for the right reasons at the right time, then obviously we're blessed to be able to put a price tag on that solution. So we make money at the same time as well. People are way more likely to want to do business with other people that they know, love, and trust, right? So it's up to us to become somebody's favorite. You know, that's what it's all about. When you started your personal brand, when would you say you started that? 2010? Well, it's funny because, I mean, 20, January 2010 was the, the, the month and the year that I started getting more active online, right? So up to that point, I had really only just used the internet for email and YouTube. You know, that was basically it, right? Um, I started blogging in January 2010. I started podcasting in April 2010. Um, videos, obviously, at the same time as well on YouTube and whatnot. And looking back on it, I guess that's probably when I first started putting myself out there in terms of creating content and publishing it and things like that. But as I look back at my career and I've been in sales and marketing for, you know, for as long as I can remember since I left, you know, college at 17 years old, much to my father's dismay at the time, didn't do university. <laughs> he couldn't believe it. Got, man didn't even talk to me for three months. Um, you know, it, 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 it's, uh, it, looking back on it, clearly the personal brand of Chris was around all those years back because I'm a big believer that people actually genuinely do business with other people that they really like. And so, you know, I, you know, I spent, you know, four or five years in the infomercial business. Um, I spent a lot of years in the publishing business, in the event business, every purchase order that I ever had a signature on every deal I closed every, you know, sponsorship that I brought on board, people weren't always necessarily buying the opportunity of being seen and heard at that event or in that magazine or, you know, buying that product, you know, per se for the TV. A lot of the time they were buying me because I put the time and the effort and I earned my stripes in building the relationships with them. And, you know, you don't need to be a scientist to work it out. Like when you first start in your career, particularly in the sales game, your sales will be very, very small in terms of volumes, in terms of amounts. You fast forward 10 years, you'll see you're closing a lot more. You're closing bigger deals with bigger clients that mean more to the customers that you're working with, et cetera, et cetera. Clearly, you get better at what you do. And at the core of everything is relationships. Absolutely. Chris, can you break down your personal brand business model? Because I think for those that don't have or are interested in personal brands, um, it can kind of confuse people because there's a lot of things you can do with a personal brand, right? Podcast, speaking, author, so many different, uh, you know, create a, your own community, so many different things, um, even launch physical physical products, whatever it may be. Can, can you uh, dissect your personal brand business model so we can understand how you made it work? Yeah. I mean, everything I do is based around three main principles, right? Um, and they're all focused on building the business more so than the personal brand. The personal brand is actually a little bit of a byproduct of just focusing in on these three main principles, meaning building, marketing, and monetizing right? So when I break that down for my clients, I break it down into five different steps. I call it the legacy growth ladder. And those five different steps start out with step number one, which is basically building your audience. So this is where you're knocking out content on a regular basis. People are starting to engage with you on social media. They're, they're kind of getting to know you a little bit for what you do and and why you do it. They're consuming your content. They're sharing it, more importantly. Uh, and you're just focused in, all in, on building that audience. You take one step up the ladder. The second step is all about amplifying your message. So, you know, you're getting yourself onto other people's podcasts. Maybe you're getting a little bit of traditional press, potentially. Maybe you're getting interviewed by, you know, online, you know, magazines or, or you know, doing these, uh, you know, top 10 
you know, best performing people in this and that industry and all that sort of stuff. You're ultimately just getting your message out there. You're amplifying that message. Now that as a direct result of that will actually mean that ultimately, whether you start going into it for this reason or not, but ultimately you start positioning yourself as an expert in your niche, in your industry. And that leads on to ladder step number three, which is all about leveraging the community that you've already built and potentially even starting the monetization part of it. So we've gone from building and marketing. Now we're going into monetization, right? So leveraging that community, getting that audience to ultimately get behind you in a project or two. This is where I suggest almost anyone that is leaning into the personal branding model starts to ultimately think about publishing their own book because it's one of the lowest hanging fruits when it comes to expert positioning. Um, you could even potentially, depending on how big that audience and that community is that you've grown so far, you could potentially even think about um, putting together and launching and growing a membership site of some variety, even if it's just a Patreon kind of setup, whatever the case may be. I know many, many YouTubers, for example, who are only, you know, four or five or maybe 10,000 subscribers in on their YouTube journey, but they're already making three, four, five thousand dollars a month through Patreon, right? Because people are all about them. They're, they're their favorite YouTuber, their favorite lifestyle, their favorite vlogger, whatever it is. So that's step number three is to leverage that community. Think about potentially getting your work into a book, whether it's traditionally or self-published, and then maybe even think about starting to monetize in some way, shape, or form. Step four, we start pouring a little bit of gasoline all over the fire. So we, we start thinking about monetizing that expertise via developing a flagship digital course. The reason why this is digital is because it's scalable, right? You can open, you know, ultimately work on it once and sell it over and over and over again. There could be sponsorship opportunities at this point as well, particularly if you've built up a really, really good um, following on social media. You could potentially even think about starting some speaking as well, or even holding your own one day workshops with the people that are in your community that want a little bit more access to you in person, which is gold. And then lastly, that fifth step on that ladder is really, you know, this is five years in multi-day conferences such as our Youpreneur, you know, our Youpreneur Summit conference, maybe a high-end mastermind. I have one which is $25,000 a year. I just work with 10 people only throughout the entire year. It's called the round table. I lean into the whole King Arthur thing, being a Brit and all the rest of it. Um, you know, so that's a high-end mastermind, right? It's just 10 people that I work with, but that 10%, or rather that, those 10 people are, you know, the, the creme de la creme of the top 5% of the top 20% of the top 50%, right? Of the community, um, joint ventures. Maybe at this point you also get some investor advisor roles coming your way as well and a whole bunch of other stuff. So that's ultimately the model, but it all focuses around those three core foundational principles of build market and monetize. And I go into that obviously in great detail in, in Rise of the Youpreneur as well. So are there times, there, there's no specific, I mean, you said like step five, building a multi-day conference or high-end mastermind would come like five years in. Is there any other timelines for the other? Do you bounce the others? Do you bounce back and forth sometimes like, oh. No, not really. I mean, I, I think that it's important, particularly if a personal brand is involved, that you don't try and run before you can walk. I mean, you know, the old adage of, um, you know, multitasking being a myth is very, very true. It is. You can only work on one thing to completion uh, at a time, right? So, you know, you can't start building your audience and then, you know, two weeks later, start selling tickets for, you know, a, a multi-day conference with 500 people. <laughs> it's just, it's not going to work out as well as you probably might think it is, right? So, I, I don't know. I mean, I say the five-year period, but I have seen people do it faster. It, it always comes down to, you know, how much work you're going to put into it. It's like anything else, right? If you if you go all in on something, you of course, you can fast track that. Of course, you can. I know some people that are a year, a year and a half into this journey. They've, they've built that audience up there. They position themselves very quickly as an expert in their industry and boom, a book deal will come their way. 18 months in, 
Some other people it might take two, three, four years. So it really depends, I guess, on how much energy you've got for it all as well. <laughs> Fair enough. I have seen people start with um, a, a, a large conference, right? And then they start to build their personal brand after their they've started that launch conference, but they have significant connections to help them do that. Sure. I think. Yeah. Um, how did you start? I think you started by building your audience just by blogging, right? Yeah. Blogging was, um, blogging was definitely the first step, but I mean, I started podcasting four months after I started blogging. Um, and I soon fell in love with it because I'm certainly more of a talker than a typer. That's for sure. Uh, and, um, you know, as time has gone by, I've done less and less writing and more and more audio and video uh, content. It's just, it's what I enjoy doing more, more than anything else. You know, it, it, that's not to say that we don't create written content at youpreneur.com and at chrisducker.com, uh, but nine times out of 10, I'll be working with a content creator to do that written content today. So I might dictate, you know, five minutes. You know, I don't know about you, but I, I just get the most silly ideas in two places in the shower and on airplanes. They're the two places where literally my content writer who's based over in, in, in Toronto in, in Canada, I will send her voice messages and they'll either be in like an echoey bathroom because <laughs> I get out of the shower and I'm dripping or, or they're on an airplane where there's, you know, sort of lots of background noise and, you know, you know, that airplane kind of engine noise that you get. And uh, they're the two places for me where I come up with, oh, I want to talk about this next week. Or next month, I'd like a two-part, you know, uh, uh, two, two posts, two-part series on, you know, whatever it is, you know, launching a YouTube channel or whatever it is. So it's one of those things. I, I think the most important thing here, though, particularly with our, with our content creation, is that we're creating content in a way that makes us happy. Because if we're not enjoying creating the content, uh, regardless of what medium we're using, if we're not enjoying it, then we won't continue it for very long. And if you don't continue it, then that lack of consistency is going to get in the way of you ultimately being, you know, quote unquote, successful doing what we're doing. Right. How long, how long did it take you, Chris, before the audience started, you started getting momentum with the audience? It's a good question. I think probably, I'm going to say probably about a year. And when I say momentum, that's, that's you know, that's, you know, 5,000 people on the email list, um, which back in those days, you know, it took an entire year of consistent three times a week publishing. Now, you could do that in a month with some money, right? We didn't have Facebook ads back in 2010, right? So, you know, you can, you can definitely, if you've got a little bit of budget here, a bit of a financial runway, you can absolutely fast track a lot of this. Um, but I think, yeah, that was probably the time where I started to see, you know, the retweets happening on mass and, um, lots of emails, lots of comments, lots of shares, uh, you know, people coming up to you, at, at a conference that you that you thought you know would would never know who you are or recognize you. I remember the first speaking gig I did, quote unquote, in the industry, right? The online business industry was in 2011. Uh, it was in LA, and I was talking about how you can build a team of virtual employees because uh, I run a couple of uh, outsourcing businesses as well. Um, how you, can, how you can ultimately work with um, virtual assistants and virtual employees to build your business. And I think I was sharing like 45 tips in 45 minutes, something like that. And I couldn't believe it. I get introduced, I step up on stage, and there's like Darren Rouse from ProBlogger in the audience. There's John Chow, who I, I don't think he's doing a whole lot nowadays, but 10 years ago, he was one of the main big affiliate marketers, Right. Um, there was Leo Babauta from Zen Habits in my audience. Um, and it just goes to show you that, you know, you know what you know and what you don't know, you don't know. Those guys knew how to blog. Those guys knew how to sell, but they didn't know 
how to work with virtual assistants and build a virtual team. So our level of quote unquote expertise is entirely down to us and the work that we put into it. Uh, and there's many, many people that are out there that are super, super smart, way more successful than I am. But I guarantee you, I could school them on a couple of things. I, I guarantee it because nobody has a monopoly on good ideas. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. So you said, okay, building the audience started to get momentum after a year. When did you start to hone in and focus on amplifying your message? It was probably 2013. Um, I got the, I, I, December, 2012, I got an email from a publishing house over in the United States saying that they wanted to do a book on a uh, book with me. Um, ended up not going with that offer, but it did kind of, you know, prick my ears up enough to get an agent, put together a proposal and ultimately, uh, write virtual freedom. And we shipped it out to 16 publication houses, uh, in the United States, we got four offers, which was great. Uh, did not go with the biggest offer in terms of an advance, but went with what I believe was the best publisher at the time. Uh, they did turn out to do a good job. Um, and here we are now with, you know, over 5,000 five-star reviews and coming up on 100,000 copies of that book sold around the world in different formats. So that was really when, when I got that deal and I knew that book was going to be coming out early 2014, I knew I had to put my foot down on the gas because I wanted to launch it with as big of an audience as possible. And, uh, you know, even though I was doing well and I had great friends that were willing to have me on their podcasts and, and things like that, um, I didn't want to rest on my laurels and I, I wanted to try and sell as many copies as I can myself, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And, and the message that you honed in on was creating virtual freedom, right? Creating location independence. Well, it wasn't necessarily location independence. I mean, you know, I, I kind of got roped into that world a little bit for three or four years, not against my will or anything, but you know, there's a lot of stuff going on in and around Southeast Asia. I was based there, obviously in the Philippines, it was 18 years. I was in the Philippines all in all. Um, and because I was a guy in the Philippines, like I was the guy in the Philippines doing anything um, kind of worthy to talk about, I guess, online um, without getting yourself into trouble, I guess, you know, it was, it was, it was easy for me to kind of meet with people, um, converse with people. It was, it, there was a certain amount of mystique, I think, involved. There was, well, Chris Ducker, the British guy, what, what's he doing in the Philippines of all countries, <laughs> yeah. you know? And so, you know, believe it or not that, you know, now we're back in England there's not much, so much mystique anymore. It's just, oh, oh okay. Another, yeah, another you're in Cambridge. <laughs> okay. Great. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so yeah, it, it, it was an interesting time though, because you know, the four hour work week had come out late 2009, early 2000, oh, wait, late 2008, early 2009, something like that. Um, and everyone was going goo goo for outsourcing because of that book. Um, and it just so happened that I was running an outsourcing business, which we still own and operate to this day with several hundred employees. Um, and it, you know, it was a matter of being the right guy in the right place with the right model at the right time. And so I lent into it. I always say you got to lean into situations unless you completely disagree with them, lean into the situation, let it, you know, sit back and see where it's going to drag you because, if I hadn't have done that, I probably wouldn't have had that book come out. And if I hadn't had that book come out, you know, it, I probably wouldn't have had all these new customers. If I hadn't had new customers, I wouldn't have made the money. If I didn't make the money, couldn't have reinvest it. If I didn't reinvest it, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you. So I think, you know, th th there's a big reason why you should lean into those opportunities. Unless you completely oppose it, lean, always lean in. You never know what's going to happen. I like that. How long until you started leveraging your community to, to monetize, create a membership site, um, and other things for your personal brand? Well, the membership, yeah, the membership site didn't come until like 2015, uh, when we launched, uh, the Upreneur Academy, but I was already making money with the community a year after I started it in 2010, 2011. So I was holding, when I was traveling, you know, at events and when I was visiting with with corporate clients at our uh, call center facility, um, I would put on, you know, an extra day or two and I say, Hey, I'm going to do a one day mastermind. It's a round table mastermind, six people. It's a grand ahead. Come in, we'll talk, we'll hang out, we'll do dinner. Bop, 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 bop. And it kind of just grew 
from there. Um, and then obviously 2013, 2014, we did the first tropical think tank in the Philippines, which was a major turning point because then, you know, I've gone from content creator to, you know, kind of mastermind host to now live event host. And, and, you know, we flew people in the, you know, the first year we had like, we had John Lee Dumas, we had Pat Flynn, we had Amy Porterfield, you know, these total ballers in the industry who I just happy to, you know, was, was, you know, very happy to call friends. And I, you know, created these friendships over a period of years. Um, and I said, Hey, you want to come to the Philippines for a week, hang out? I can't pay you, but, um, I'll take care of your hotel room and we'll have a lot of fun. Okay. So they all come over and, you know, we sell that, that first year, we only sold 25 tickets. We sold out in one day and we sold just 25 tickets. Wanted to make it super, super, super intimate. And then every year after that, we doubled that to 50. Um, and we did it for five years in a row. We had guys like, uh, I mean, good Lord, we were Darren Rouse came out one year. Lewis Howes, uh, came out one year. Uh, Brian Clark came out one year, you know, Sean Stevenson, you know, genuine all out influencers and very, very, very successful guys all came over based nothing, you know, based on nothing but the relationships that I had with them. Nobody got paid. Nobody got paid. Uh, all come over on their own dime. We hang out for an entire week and have a lot of fun. And that was really, you know, something, you know, 20 years from now, I'm still going to be talking about those events because I'm still friends with all those people. And I'm also happy to say that many of the attendees that would pay to, to, to be there, they're also friends. I've even gone to somebody's wedding. I've been at somebody else's kid's christening. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it, it just goes, if you don't do these things, you don't know what's going to come from them, you know? Right. What were you charging for tickets starting out? Do you remember? Tropical Think Tank first year was $3,000. And then the next year we ramped it to four and a half K. And that was where it remained for the, for the, for the, le- you know, the rest of the time that we did the event. How long, Chris, until you started launching digital courses? My first course was in 2013. Um, and I have not released any other digital courses per se, uh, since then, um, what I've decided to do, um, now that being said, we do actually have one slated for later this year. Um, but honestly speaking, it just wasn't for me at the time. Although I made some good money out of it, I didn't like the whole set and forget mentality of it in terms of coaching. Um, and I, I genuinely do enjoy being a business coach. I, I enjoy being a business mentor, depending on what label you want to wear. Um, and you can't do that so much through a course per se, which is why the membership for me, the Youpreneur Academy for me is, is a great way to work with hundreds and hundreds of people around the world every year. It's just $39 a month and people come in and they learn how to build market and monetize their personal brand. And I show up regularly. We hang out talk, we converse, we create amazing digital content. It's all in there. I mean, we've, we've got so much digital content inside of the academy for 39 bucks a month. I could probably create 10 courses and I'm not exaggerating, maybe more of, of, you know, based on certain, you know, subjects and topics and things like that. Um, we have all of our keynotes, which are all filmed, uh, with three cameras, beautiful, venue in London for the Upana Summit every year. They all go in there. People say, why don't you charge for a virtual ticket? Nah, just put it in the academy. You know, just sometimes less is more. Like I'm a big believer of that. Um, and I just know that by funneling everybody through to that one academy, that one community, that when we do open the doors to other bits and pieces that we do, people are more likely to jump on board because they've got really good sense as to what we're all about and what we do and why we do it. Yeah. Makes perfect sense. Chris, I think we need to touch on briefly before we wrap things up mm-hmm. on, um, you know, a, a crisis has happened in the world and, um, people entrepreneurs need to know like what types of shifts to make so they can stay in business so they can keep their customers and clients moving. Um, what are you doing personally to, to shift through this, this crisis? 
Um, and how are you staying on top of things? Well, I can tell you what I'm not doing. What I'm not doing is giving me, give my stuff away for free because I see a lot of people doing that. That's just stupid. There's no other word I can find to describe that. L literally that's the stupid because you know what? Yeah. Okay. It's a horrible situation. Don't get me wrong. And it's affecting everyone around the world. Like several, several of my friends have come down with this thing. I'm very happy to say they're all beating it, uh, but they have come down with it, including influencers in, in, in the online space who may or may not go public with the fact that they've had it. I know they have. And so the issue here is that when this is all over and done with, and eventually it will be, it might be a few months, it could be a year and a half, whatever it is, not only are your people going to need you still to be around, and that's going to be a lot harder if you yourself are giving everything away and not making any money for a start. But secondly, for me personally, you know, one of the things I get quoted on all the time is charge what you're worth. Whatever it is you're putting into a product or service of experience for your people, if you give that away for free, it means, it means in my eyes that you're not worth much. Don't give stuff away for free ever, even throughout a crisis, because this, this is going to pass. It is going to get better. It is going to go. And we need to be able to be on a good footing with our audience and with our community when it is all over. And here's the thing. If people get used to getting stuff for free from you, when you put something in front of them that has a price tag on it, they're going to bark. They're not going to buy anything. And at the end of the day, we are in business. And I don't try and romanticize over this at all. We're in business to make money. Like it's okay to be selfish with that in mind, because if you're not making money, you don't have a business. You've just got a hobby, right? And I don't know about you, but I don't need another hobby. I'm a very good <laughs> Lego builder. Thanks to my 11 year old son teaching me. I don't need another hobby. You know what I mean? So I think first and foremost, please don't give your stuff away for free. If you want to cut people a bit of a deal and discount things for short periods of time to help people out, by all means, that's absolutely fine. But don't give your work away for free, particularly in the personal brand space, because ultimately what we're doing is we're building a business based around our expertise. And by doing that, you're saying that your expertise isn't worth much. And you and I both know that is not the case. The second thing that I would be doing is I would be taking a guide mentality throughout all of this rather than the hero mentality. And when I say that, let me explain it in geeky Star Wars terms. We need to be Obi-Wan Kenobi. We don't need to be Luke Skywalker, right? We don't need to be the guy that's there to save the princess. We need to be the old guide, the old dude who teaches the young hero how to go and save the princess, shows him the way to make it happen. We need to be the guide. We need to show up more so now for our communities than ever before. We need to be there more often. We need to be there for longer periods of time. We need to be there holding their hands if, if, if we need to at certain times throughout the next few months, throughout the next six months, whatever it might end up being. You've got to be the guide and not the hero. And lastly, I would say this is the time, and this will contradict me a little bit in regards to my first point, but allow me to, 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 to contradict myself a little bit. This is also the time to have more of a mission mindset rather than a money mindset. So mission over money is something I've been saying quite a bit throughout all of this. Now, you still need to make money, hence the whole don't give your stuff away for free mentality, right? But there has to be something deeper than just that. For you to come out on the other end of this, not only do you need some profits, but you need to know that people are out there looking at you as that guide, realizing what your mission is, realizing what you're standing for and why you're showing up. And with that mission over money mindset, that's exactly what will happen. Very good point. Um, <clears throat> how are some ways that you are? So those are, those are great steps. W when this all happened, uh, what are some ways specifically in your business, either like communication you had with your team or strategies you started to come up with or calls with other entrepreneurs um, to brainstorm, like what's the next step? What are, what are some of those things that you did personally? Well, you know, we have several different businesses, right? So we have a very large brick and mortar business over in the Philippines. That's a whole different discussion compared to the one that I might be having here with the Youpreneur team. 
So, you know, with, with the team in the Philippines, 370 employees, three floors over a five floor building, um, government mandated guidelines, lockdowns, this that, and the other, all totally different conversations, right? With those, uh, and actually, even with my management team over there, definitely more video conference calls. I'm not there. I'm, I can't go in to see them. I can't, I'm not even on the same time zone. So I'm going to make myself more, more available to my management team. They are the ones at the end of the day that ultimately run the business for us day to day, right? So I've definitely made myself more available to the team members, not just in the Philippines, but also here in the UK and obviously elsewhere as well. You know, we're, we're lucky, Chris, because we, we aren't constrained by geographical location for the majority of our businesses, other than the call center where obviously we need butts on seats. But every, every other business that we have, we hire people who are going to be amazing for the job, first and foremost, rather than where they are. It's not a location thing. And because of that, we've got people all around the world. I've got a designer in Australia. I've got a content writer in Canada. I've got a content writer around the corner from where I live, literally in England. I've got developers over in Eastern Europe. I've got people that, you know, edit videos in San Diego and New York for me. They're literally all around the world. And so, you know, sometimes it's a little tough to get everybody on the same page on video calls and things like that. But um, I think really from a leader's perspective, you've just got to be there. You've got to make yourself available and let them know that it's okay. We have the financial runway to get through this. Your jobs are safe. We have to continue showing up. We have to continue knocking out our content. We have to continue inspiring and helping others aspire, right? Just like we do every single day. And if we do that, we will be here at the end of it all because we've been the guide, not the hero. It's not an ego thing. It's not an ego thing. It's a, it's a guide thing. And I think that's, you know, honestly been my, my number one focus. Very well put, my friend. Chris, we are going to wrap up there. I want to say thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for sharing all your tips and tricks with, with us. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Chris. Thank you for having me. It was all fun. Right, if the listeners want to reach out and learn more about what you have going on, where's the best place they can do that at? Well, they can go to, you know, at Chris Ducker on all the socials, send me a message. I'd love to hear from them or just youpreneur.com. Perfect. And again, Chris, thank you so much for spending time with us this morning. We're going to wrap up there. Listeners, thank you for tuning in once again, and we'll see you on the next episode. Goodbye, everybody. Hey, listeners, thanks for joining us once again. We wanted to remind you about our high-performance productivity coaching and our five, six, seven, and eight-figure private masterminds. These are all designed for entrepreneurs by entrepreneurs to help you scale rapidly and grow. Check out all the details at thebusinessmethod.com. That's thebusinessmethod.com. And we'll see you all on the next episode.